During these recordings, of course, I wrecked some of my arrows again, as always. So I need to make some more arrows. This I'm gonna run, get to it. I, ho I hope you have uh, enjoyed this DVD. Any questions, things we didn't show to you, please uh, drop us an email and we'll try and help. Um, watch our YouTube channel, the Fairbo channel, and you'll find uh, manuals or how-to movies there as well. And uh, after all this arrow making, you'll see a preview of our other DVDs so far, making the English, English longbow made simple. And uh, we'll be recording number three in the series pretty soon. Have fun making your own arrows. Till soon, take care. This is my friend Magen from Fairbo in Holland. Hi, this is Jim Bosbo from Rotterbos from the States. We're going to show you today how to take a lot of these parts and these things and to build an exquisite English longbow. That's the 18 wheeler truck among bows. That's right, it is. If you've ever shot an English longbow, you'd know it. We need to make some toothing marks in the material. It enlarges the surface. This is one of the ways how to do it. With our toothing plane, you can scrape this lengthwise. Again, my friend McGann just showed you uh, to put toothing grooves in this to give that glue something to grab. There's one more step. If you want a barrel tapered center core, you're going to have to do that. And there's a lot of ways to do it. You can use power tools, you can use hand tools, or you can buy pre tapered barrel core pieces from. Fair bow or from rudder bows, you know, again, my friend from Holland, he's actually the reason I fell in love with English longbows. Make sure it's everywhere, on both pieces of wood, or on three if you're using triangles. Megan, if you tip that cup over and you just pour it on there, it'll get it on there a lot Make faster. Make everything dirty. That's alright, it's a shop. Another thing is too, if you don't want to mess with all this stuff, but you want to get on with the project of the bow, you just keep in mind, we've got this whole thing available for you, glue up done, sanding done, as a matter of fact, we can pre-shape the bow for you, and then you can get right onto the meat of tillering this thing. Now we need to tell the wood, the bow, well we're about to call this a bow, we need to tell it the wood's been taken off. If you don't do this motion, I usually like to sing a song, row, row, row your boat, just to give me a tempo. Row, row. I'm not going to buy your uh, new music CD there, Megan, I'm sorry. Oh, whatever. <laughs> it's sort of an inside joke because my students in Holland, they know that when they go row, row, row your boat, they go, ah, oh, not again. When you don't understand what's wrong, attack a problem as small as possible, one step at a time. Megan has showed you how to make an English bow bend properly. Nice, symmetrical, beautiful curves. Now we have to talk about draw weight. How do you achieve the draw weight you want? Well, you have to put it on the stick first, and there's a couple of different methods you can use. There's hardly a uh, bathroom on the world that doesn't have a, a typical spring scale, bathroom scale. You can put this on here, and it's fairly accurate. You can get within a couple of pounds uh, of the draw weight that you're measuring with a typical bathroom scale 
and a tillering stick. That's nice. So would you finish, or would you call it a basic bow? I would call it the basic You bow. can actually draw that to full length, and all yes, it needs is just a sanding and a finish and my own taste of artwork. When you order this, we need to know what you want, and we'll service that for you. You mean I can get any draw?